guys, my name is Jake and today I thought I'd help and make a tutorial on how to make a Snapchat geo filter using Photoshop and a pretty neat app on your phone, a free app. So to start, you're going to want to make go to Photoshop and create a new file size. Let's do that right now. Okay, new. I'll just name it geo filter. And you're going to want to make it 1080 by 1920 and resolution should always be 300 that's, the, that's a good one all right so you should see a white box it's good if you want to it should be transparent in the end anyway so you can make a new layer and delete the background if you want this will be your new background that works too and so to start uh i'm going to show you guys a pretty neat app on your phone so let's do that right now okay so the app that we're going to be using today is called adobe capture and as you can see, I already started it, but I chose to for this geo filter to use uh, an alligator vector because I'm doing a nature preserve. So you can just hit the plus sign on the bottom. You can go to your camera roll, and I took a photo of the alligator at the nature preserve that I'm going to be use. Try to use your own photos. And as you slide this bar, it kind of selects more of the picture that you're going to use. So let's see here. That looks pretty good right there, I think. Alrighty, now it becomes an editing stage. So you rub your finger over the parts of the picture that you don't want. I don't think I want very much at the top. Uh, I think I'll leave the bottom, the black, the grass and stuff. That looks pretty cool. And you can also crop it if you want to as well. Okay, so hit next. And as you can see, it becomes a vector image. It smooths it out for you. Next, okay, you can save the shape, and there you go. So there's the shape. Now what you want to do is you can either export it by saving the image to your camera roll, and then you can send it to yourself via email or text, or I believe you can also save it to your Adobe Cloud, and it'll appear under Illustrator or Photoshop. Okay, so now that we're back in Photoshop, you can see that I nicknamed the background background, so that way it's easy to find. And I also imported both my images from the app. So I did two of the gators. I think I like this one better. This one's a little bit darker, looks a little bit cooler. So to start, obviously it's you want to be transparent. So what you can do is make sure you're hovered over the layer. Go to select color range. Okay. Click on the white and bring fuzziness to about 90 it's already about there for me okay it's good and click ok and now as you see it's hard to see but it's selected all the white on the image and you can just hit delete Oops. and make sure you rasterize the layer as well so now you should be able to hit the delete button deletes all the white awesome just what we wanted so now we have just the black image for the vector and i think that okay so now you can go to hit v or you can click on the moving tool. I think I'm going to put them down here. It's pretty awesome. I think actually what I'm going to do is... Move him independently from the grass to a little bit lower because... Snapchat doesn't like if geo filters are typically take up a lot of space. That was pretty Yep, I like that. So hit enter or get out of it. Okay, that looks pretty cool. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to add some color, of course. So what you can do is go to a new layer and the nickname is the gator so we can find it easily. And what you're going to want to do is move the layer below the vector image. Pick a color that you want. I'm going to pick a nice green. that pops okay pick your brush tool okay, it should be good for now now I'm just gonna fill him in a little bit Oops. Ah, didn't click it. There we go. okay make sure of course that the color you want is the foreground go ahead and fill that in a little bit doesn't matter if you get outside the lines that much you can always go back and erase some of it 
like I probably will end up having to do. That looks pretty awesome, I'm not gonna lie. Just a little bit. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Okay. And yeah, we'll get the eraser tool, E, is the shortcut for it. And make sure you're on the color layer. Leave that there. Most of it's actually not bad. Because there's not a solid outline for the image, I think that a lot of it can get away with coming out of the lines like this. Maybe we'll change this to a brush mode, so it's a little bit softer of a brush. Okay. Actually, yeah, we'll go down a little bit lower on the top of the head, just a little bit. Maybe just a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Looks like I might have missed a spot right there. Okay. That's pretty cool. Now, I think that I will add some water to this as well. So we'll make a new layer. Nickname that the gator color or green and we'll name this layer water we'll put it below both of those because obviously the water is beneath the gator and what I think I might do is a nice soft blue I'll go to the gradient tool And if you hold shift while making a gradient, it'll be a straight line. Oops, no, not what we wanted at all. Still not what we wanted. Oops, there we go, that's what I wanted. Yeah, that's kind of cool. A little bit transparent, you know, it doesn't take up a lot of space. So. Yeah, that's pretty cool actually. Be a little bit higher up. Awesome. Yeah, that looks awesome. All right. Now, next, obviously, you're going to want to have an indicator of where the location is, okay? So you can start a new layer. And this place that I'm doing is a nature preserve in Florida called Boyd Hill. So what you're going to do is click the text font. Spell it what you want. The default font, I guess the last one I used was this one. Can make it even bigger than that. Okay, now this is where the this can get pretty fun actually. So Snapshot allows all different kinds of fonts. So one that, site that I like to use is called 1001 Fonts. It's right here. I'll, I can leave the link in the description for you guys. Because this is a nature preserve, I search for the nature tag, and it also lets you type in your the text that you want to sample, so you know exactly how it's going to look. I found this one called Pinewood. I think this looks really cool. I think it'd be really great for the geo filter that I'm aiming for. So I downloaded it. And right here. Okay, go ahead and double click this TTF file. Install font. Awesome. Okay. Cool, back to Photoshop. And it should be here now. Go ahead and highlight your font. It's called Pinewood. Okay, if you click on this up here, bring it to the character box, and this is where you can uh, pretty much edit any of the sizing or spacing of your font that you're choosing. This is a pretty big space, so what I'm going to do is bring the letters a little bit closer together. Let's 
still really big. Maybe what I'll do is double line it and do this. No, I definitely do think that it should be on the same line. We'll just make the space itself smaller. Okay, that's pretty cool looking. We'll make it darker obviously so it's easier to see. Probably a nice dark green is what I'm thinking. Okay, now, one of the key things for any geofilter is that it needs to be able to be seen from all types of lighting, whether it be in a dark room or bright sun sky. So, something that I recommend doing to all geofilters, and especially fonts and text, is adding a stroke to it. Effects, stroke. Now, it really all depends what you want. Black or white are both what I recommend usually. I think, I don't want it to be too thick, because that also looks pretty cartoonish, but I think I'll go with white. Actually, I don't know. Black kind of doesn't look too bad. It shows like a darker green, but lighter green. Yeah, I think I'll do a pretty dark green, almost black. Okay, hit OK. Make sure it's the thickness that you want. I think that looks pretty neat. Okay, that looks pretty good. If you want to see what it look like on a color, you can just go to your background, choose a gray or a white, depending on the stroke that you chose for your text. Since mine's black, I can pretty much go with white if I want to. Go to your bucket tool. Alright, so that looks pretty killer. I think that's exactly how I want it. I might move the grass to a little bit over so there's not that gap right here. So what I can do is select this. Oops. Make sure that you're on the right layer, of course. Okay. Oops. As you can see, there's also left a little bit. Not sure what layer that's on. But if you can see it, or I mean, you might not be able to see it. Tiny bit of a. Uh... Oh, it might be from the water. I don't know where that was from. I think part of the background was just deleted, that's all. No biggie, we can fix that. Oh, there we go, this is part of the white. Okay, so. Okay, so I think that's exactly how I want it. So now we can do a save it, of course just so you, in case you want to go back and edit it. Actually, before you save it, also you want to make sure it's centered, okay? So what you can do is select the text in the background tool, make sure it's visible. By hitting command when you click them both, go to the top, this view setting, and click on this one right here. It aligns it and centers the whole whatever you want to center, okay? Now we can save it without the background on. Name it GeoFilter, of course, it's fine. Then go to Save for Web, because that's this is the format that Snapchat likes. Save for Web. Okay, exactly how we want it. Ping 24, always make sure transparency is clicked. And as long as the file size, you can see it down here, is un below 300, then it's golden. And ours, of course, is 246, which is perfect. It's going to look great. It's exactly how we want it to look. So you can hit save. I'll name it Boyd Hill so it's easy to find. Save it to your Photoshop uh, folder or your desktop, whatever is easiest for you to find it on. And save it. Okay. Now what we're going to want to do is go back to Snapchat.com. Community filter is what the one that we're looking for. Create now. 
Okay, hit next. All right, first you can find your location. I'm sure mine's gonna be easy to find. Boyd Hill Nature Preserve. All right. Now you click anywhere on this map to draw the geofence is what it's called. It's the box that the geofilter appears in. As long as everything that you want is inside, it doesn't have to be very pretty of a look of a box around it. Boyd Hill is a pretty large area. It does cover part of this lake, so I will go up there. Okay, that looks good. This is where I want it. Click this white box over here, and that's where you're gonna pick the geofilter that you want. Awesome. Your name, your email, why this location is meaningful to you. Of course, check these three boxes and you hit submit. And if you did it right, when you check your email that you left over here, you will see a confirmation email with the geofilter that you submitted. And all you have to do from then on is wait for Snapchat to activate it and approve it. If for some reason they disapprove it, make sure that you, of course, it, you saved it as a transparent geofilter and make sure it doesn't take up too much space and I've also found that often you can resubmit it with this little major tweaks uh, minor tweaks of course and um, they'll accept it the next time so that's all for now you guys if you guys want any more tutorials just let me know thank you